Well, Fred, uh, I know a lot of people seem to be reluctant or confused when using a speed light or a flash unit, even uh, ones that are built onto the camera. So Fred and I thought we would help you with that, simplify this, and encourage you to go out there and use your flash units and use them properly. So especially, or get the mo let's just say get the most out of it. Yeah, you get the most out of it. And, because uh, that's what we always want with our photography is getting the most out of our Well, our, not only get the most gear. out of it, but just making it eliminate some of that confusion that there people you go. Okay. have with a flash because right. it's really not that confusing. Uh, let's boil this down to the simple parts here that you've got. Basically, when you're using a flash, there's two sources of light. You've got your ambient light, there's environmental light that's around you. Now, regardless of how many sources there might actually be, if you're outside, the primary is going to be the sun, and then there's some uh, reflection from the sky, too. Okay. We don't worry, worry about that. Just say that's the ambient light. Then you got the strobe, or the flash itself. Which is an introduced light source, yes. Yes, yes. So your ambient light, the exposure in that is controlled by, of course, your ISO, your shutter speed, and your aperture. The flash, however is only controlled by the, well, the aperture to some extent, but primarily the flash itself. That the setting that you have set on the flash amount, whether it's full flash or if you reduced the amount of flash, that is separate from the ambient. So you have the control over those two. You can set your uh, exposure. And what I like to do is when we're using the ambient as a fill, I like to reduce that because fill light generally is reduced maybe a stop or more from your primary source so you underexpose that whether you're using exposure compensation to underexpose it or setting on a manual and setting it down a stop from the proper exposure and then you adjust your a flash in order to have a correct exposure proper exposure and you might have to play with this a bit so why don't we go out into the field first okay. and show setup using the built-in flash, which generally we don't really enjoy those, but you can use it. It's especially helpful for a uh, for filling in from ambient. And then we're going to come back here and we'll show you some portraits. Some of the results. Yeah, some of the yeah. results that we did, and um, then tell what we liked and what we didn't like on those. Okay. Okay, the very first one we thought we would do here for flash is the built-in flash. Now, unfortunately, the uh, position of the flash right on the camera is probably the... Not, not the best. It's the yeah. worst position you can put it and use a flash. Unfortunately, you can't move the built-in flash, so you're kind of stuck with that. And But this technique here will work even if you're using an external flash on your camera. What you want to do is put the person uh, with nice backlight on him so the sun or her yeah or her hopefully you're using you're, somebody good looking your victim <laughs> <laughs> so you put your push your victim or your subject so they've got nice backlight on them now the face is in um, the shadow so right. if I step back here and take a picture take a photo of my victim <laughs> you're gonna see that the uh, picture, your face is dark. So what you can do, pop up your internal flash or use your uh, regular flash on the hot shoe. Well, let's, let's show you that that's all they have, so they're gonna pop up their yeah. flash. And, well, either one, you can do either way. And then you wanna go into the flash control, whether it's uh, the internal one, assuming your camera has this, and it should, you're gonna go into the flash control and you're gonna adjust it to one stop under because you're going to use it just as a fill. So, fill flash. Remember him? Yeah. Yeah, fill flash. So, I've got this one stop under and that's going to pop up and it's going to put light on our subject's face. So, that is one way you can use and get away with, with a top mounted. Yeah, yeah. using a built in and, and flash or even an external sure. flash. If they're using an external flash mounted on the hot shoe, I know a lot of people say, oh, well, that's, that's the way I do all my uh, photography of this type. And we bounce it or do whatever. It's still not the optimum area right. for 
yeah, a flash. In this case, and because it, of the built-in, because it's so low down to the camera, yep. you worry about shadow cast from the lens. You worry about a lot of different things that are going to make it a little tougher to get uh, a good exposure, a good image capture. But that's all right, folks. We're saying if you got to work with what you've got or if that's the situation you have, here's how to get the best results from that. And let's talk about lenses for a moment because ideally for portraiture, for full frame, around 85 millimeters. This is a crop sensor, so around 50 millimeters is the ideal because you want to get in fairly close. If you get too far back, the flash isn't going to have enough. Exactly. exactly. And you might have to experiment. Uh, I did a one stop under, but look at your image after you take it and then go from there. So why don't we go ahead and set up and talk about using an external flash, one that you can remove and don't necessarily have to use on the hot shoe. Okay. All right. Okay, now we're gonna go with an external flash. Now, as we had mentioned, we wanna get that flash off the camera. Uh, you don't want it to be positioned right right where the camera is, that's the worst position. So I have the flash over here. There's two ways you can do this. I mean, you can hold this up and use a cable. Off camera. Off camera. Flash extender, yeah. yeah. Flash extender. That goes on the hot shoe and then there's where your flash would correct. go. Correct. But we're gonna use, in order to give us a little more flexibility, we're trying to keep this as simple as possible. So ideally, if we were really gonna do this right, we would use some kind of scrims or an umbrella or something, but again, we're trying to keep this as simple as possible. Just a, a plain flash, and I do have a, soft. Uh, what do you call it, a yeah, soft box on here to soften it just a bit, but it's not gonna soften it that much. Ideally, we would bounce this off an umbrella or use some kind of a big soft box in front of it here. So, But again, just for simplicity, we're not gonna do that. And I'm using radio poppers, there's a number of different uh, wireless units. Oh, you there's can a ton use. of them. There's some of them very inexpensive. Some, some of them quite expensive. Quite yeah, expensive. I think you can pick up some from Amazon for as low as 25 bucks. Something like yeah, that. Yeah, they're effective. They don't have the ETTL, but you don't have to worry about that. Basically, what we're going to do is we'll set Fred up here, and um, with a radio popper, this should trigger our flash. So make sure you focus on the person's eyes. And I think our flash went to sleep. So that's <laughs> that's our one without the flash. So we have our non-flash and you can see it's, it's very dark. And what we want to do is we want to make sure the background's dark and to separate our subject. Did it go off? It didn't. Oh, there it goes, <laughs> okay. Ow. Technical difficulty. What happened is the uh, firing unit has slipped a little bit off of the hot shoe there, so. All right, let's look up that way toward the flash. I want to blind you there. And there we go. Ow. So, what you're gonna <laughs> do now is you're gonna experiment, take, if it's too bright, you're gonna go ahead and move the right. flash back or set it on manual setting and knock down the exposure compensation on the flash itself. So you're cutting it back. And uh, again, we're trying to throw the ambient out. So the uh, ambient, now in this case, is we're using the flash as our primary source. Remember, you got two sources of light. You got the ambient, you got the flash. You got to decide which one you want. In this be, case, that this was case, the primary? We're using this as a primary and our ambient as the, uh, the fill light. And on the earlier one, where you had a background, bright background behind me, I was backlit, and you were using the pop-up or the on-camera flash, yep. you were using it more as a fill. Yeah, and you can use this on either manual or I've got it right now set. One of the few times I'm using the um, uh, shutter priority setting because you want to keep the sync on this particular camera is at 2 50th of a second. But I want a little bit of that ambient to, to come out and I'm trying to throw the background somewhat out of focus. So I'm using um, a wide or wide open aperture. Okay. So um, let me do a couple more here and we'll experiment and discuss the results later with you. All right. 
now we're going to use our ambient, of course the ambient here, the primary <clears throat> light source is the sun. So it's coming on Fred's face here, but his is dark on your right side, my left. Did you see whatever just fell on me? That. Holy cow. We got acorns. The trees are throwing Man, acorns. That acorn. Yeah. I thought maybe the squirrels were saying, get lost. So what we're doing is we're getting the flash over here, and I've knocked the exposure of the flash down again. Now I'm underexposing our ambient by one stop, just to darken the tree up a little bit, but we should still get good exposure on his face. So so now I go into model mode. Yeah, let's see. Let's see I if we to. do this. And then when it's done, I'm going to have Fred, I'm going to turn around and let him do one of me. Doesn't look very comfortable, does it? <clears throat> I don't know if the flash went off. I think the flash went to sleep. Mm. Yeah, the flash uh, is in battery saver mode. Okay, let's try that again. And I think our son's changed his position because now it's not, well, that, that, that's not bad. See if you move forward, yeah, move forward a little, right there. <clears throat> It got a little more light from the sun on his face. The other one didn't. But as you can see now, we're filling in on his shadowed side. So we're using the flash as a fill. Remember, fill flash. <laughs> May he rest in peace. And our sun or the ambient is acting as our primary light source. You want to do one of me here? Sure. Here, you I've been torturing you. You can torture me so we can... I don't know, I was gonna start making myself available for uh, photo shoots here. <laughs> Let me know if uh, the sun is uh, on the, in here. Turn a little bit more towards this way. Oh, not too much, right there. It helps if you have a subject who's patient with this because it does take a little experimentation. How's it look? <clears throat> It'll get a little more <clears throat> the tree in there in the background, rather less of the, the house. You'd let me know. But. Mm -hmm. There we go. I blinked. <laughs> yeah, that's a. It's better. Looks like you're exploring. I am. <laughs> Where am I? Who am I? Yes. Well, there there you have it. So uh, we're going to do one more, or we're going to get one wait for sunset. Exactly. So, okay. So we're going to show you how to do a sunset portrait. Yes. And it's and not the sunset gonna, that's the, the yeah, subject, it's the ambient light. The subject is our subject, our portrait. So The portrait subject? human being, hopefully. Yep, and in this case, we're or going to use the ambient sunset as exactly. our fill light, and the flash is gonna be the primary source. We'll show you how to do that. The idea uh, of this is, is you experiment. You find those sweet spots for your yep. lighting. But the, the trickiest part about it is that the ambient light is never gonna be exact or steady. Yep. It's gonna fluctuate, and as time goes on, if, well, you're even, doing, as if you were doing, doing a longer sun, shoot, yes, if you're doing a longer shoot, time elapses. Clouds it, come over. Clouds come over, <clears> the <throat> position of the sun changes, so your ambient light is going to constantly be something that you're having to deal with. However, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, what you want to be able to do is then compensate by filling that in with your speed light, right? Yep, exactly. So we got one more, we're gonna, and this is one that we didn't tape, but um, this to me is my favorite style right trying to get what we call what you like to call beautiful sky yeah wonderful sky so let's go ahead and uh, talk about that sure and this is when we went into one of our favorite spots here which is uh, the locals pop stencil park but you can go anywhere over the beach in here the first one we got in here we're just setting up to see what our and ambient exposure again and fred really went <laughs> into silhouette i became mode on silhouette this. almost completely yeah on that he's one. just completely dark which is what we expected but we've got real nice backlight because the sun was setting in behind him and we were waiting for some nice color in the sky so when we add the flash in there voila yeah pretty decent look at i love the uh golden 
hue of the sun that's hitting the back of your hat and the back of your neck and there and there and there. So again, we're using the ambient as a a, a fill light or backlight, really, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and um, using the flash. And once again, it's probably unlikely you're going to set up that flash, and the first time you're going to take it, I mean, you might get lucky, and it might be okay. That's it. We don't have to go any further. But the chances are, with you doing this, you might have to do it two or three right. times. And just to, to let everybody know, we were using a diffuser, not a soft box or anything like that, but we yes. were using a diffuser on Yeah, we were trying to make this light. as simple as possible, so just a simple diffuser on the speedlight. And speed those light. things are easy to find. They just yeah. clip right on. Now, There's I, a few of the speed lights that actually have diffusers built into them or onto them where you can use them. Uh, th- one of those style it's like a little plastic piece that just yep. slips over the front and it's a nice diffuser softens the light a little bit uh it's it's not going to be as soft as if you carry a, some kind of a soft box with you and i'm hoping you're not carrying a huge thing they do make much smaller versions yes. of it and i want to mention that that's a good point because if you're doing children or uh women in your life you probably want a softer light so by all means uh once you th- get this part down then experiment by using an umbrella with the flash bounce off the inside of a reflected umbrella or a soft box mm-hmm. right those are good and the, those soft boxes are, you can get them pick them fairly inexpensively right so, so here's a whoops there's another shot there that we got uh again with fred the only problem i had with this one as far as the uh the framing is our horizon line there is kind of going downhill. Uh, <laughs> so we'll show you in a moment how you can get around that. In fact, but besides we're sitting off the side. Now the flash in this case is off to the front of Fred. And we're using that beautiful sky, which we're getting some nice color at this point. And also think of uh, portraits, full portraits. And what I did here is I took the flash, and this particular flash, a speed light, a Canon, I can adjust the the zoom on it, and I zoomed it in so it was concentrated more on his trunk and face and let his legs kind of go dark because that's what we're interested in. I don't think we wanted to interest him. All right, but you didn't cut anything off. You just used the light to draw the eye. Yep. And again, we got a a nice nice backlit on there. Yep. And um, this next one here. Is uh, yours truly? <laughs> <laughs> it's a good, beautiful shot with the light and everything, but the look on your face, my yeah. friend. Yeah, I'm going. I think I think he was contemplating life or something. That's right. Yes. Did you have a deep thought at that moment? Probably. I get I get <laughs> the, those every it was gone. I think once a year, and it was I was I had a deep thought. I wonder what that was. But uh, it looks like I should mention that just. Two seconds after he took the picture, that fence gave away, and I ended up in the... No, <laughs> no. Well, anyway... There... Basically, we were on a dock, an observation yep. dock uh, there at the at the park. But what's nice about it is that you've got a nice background, mm-hmm. nice sunlight, and he's lit, but he's not blown away, and it's not taking away anything from One what's going on in the One thing I would mention on this to improve it is um, the horizon line is cutting right through the middle of the back of my head. I yeah. think it would be better if it had been either way above the head not even with my head but above it or more towards or the shoulders better yet yeah, if it were down towards a the bit, shoulders which isn't always possible i mean you can't always get the camera up high or low enough but just something just to keep in mind if you are able to do that so this next one here this gives you i will include this purposely to show what happens uh in this case the flash was just too hot yeah so this is a case where we took the picture. He says, okay, so what do we do in this case? Um, we want to back the flash up or reduce the flash by using the flash right. compensation to reduce the And because you had that flash. on a, uh, a light stand, you had the you yeah. had two options. That's another thing to mention. Yeah, we had a light stand on this. If you don't have a light stand, maybe you can grab somebody at what they call a voice-activated light stand to hold the flash for you. Oh, and, of course, the other one that we've talked about in the past, Jim, is you can take one of those inexpensive tripods. tripods yes. And then they have different ways to adapt, so you could put your speed light on that. And those things, when we're talking expensive, they're light aluminum. Yep. You know, they're not real uh, expensive to go out and buy. You can get them just about any place. 
and then set that up. If it's one that you had earlier and say, hey, I don't use that for a tripod anymore because I have a, a nicer one or uh, more stable or whatever reason, there you go. You've got a perfect light stand just waiting for you. We're also using a radio remote on this to fire yes. the flash. Yes, yes. And then some flashes, especially if you have a built-in flash, have the capability of triggering a remote, and they don't go off. But the uh, receptor or the IR receiver on the other flash must be able to see that. So that's something to keep in mind, too. Right. But these uh, remote flashes, you can get them from uh, B&H, from Hunts, whatever. And Amazon, some of them anybody. Yeah, they, Everybody carries them, I and, think and they've got very inexpensive ones. 25 bucks. Right. So here's another one where we adjusted the flash, and this one came out nice, and you can see Fred got the just horizon bit down, down there, and he actually position the sun so it's just coming over my uh, my left shoulder there which is kind of interesting too so and then here we go another one nice close up yep and again and on some of these then once you get the the flash you can move around and you won't have to adjust things again and and of course you have to experiment because some people don't like taking the risk of having the sun that visible yep uh, but you don't necessarily yeah, you want to just... put it behind my head and look like I was a, yeah. a halo. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't think so. Like an angel. But uh, you would have broken something. And here's one we was talking about where we eliminated the horizon completely and yeah. just included the nice colors in the sky. And they're a bit out of focus, which puts it... The light, of course, is coming off to the right of the, the picture. I think that's, that's almost a... a what did you call me look? <laughs> Are you but, eyeballing me? Yeah. Are you looking at me? Mm-hmm. Are you looking at me? Uh, but if we if so we, we don't, we need a Patreon that can so we can <laughs> there you go. some models. But the idea is the background's nice, like you said, eliminated the horizon. Yep. As a matter of fact, I love it when this happens because the picture comes out so sharp it almost looks like it's superimposed onto a background. Or you added the background. We yeah. did not add a background. Yeah, Jim this did is not, not add anything to it. Green screen or whatever. This is or or real. what they call sky replacement. Yeah. He did not do sky replacement. We were going with what we had. In fact, here, this proves it, because here's the one we did, again, because of Fred's technique of putting the sun right there, so it's just kind of peeking out, and we got it uh, coming out of the neck. And again, I don't think we really adjusted the flash much, because we had it all pretty much set up, and the exposure was proper, so I can move around with the camera and get right. several shots. So, and... Um, I had to have one of them. Yeah, so, so. Jim had to have one of those. Yep. So, Jim, you need to learn how to smile, guy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think either of us were really smiling much on that no. one. No. Uh, the no CMs were starting to come out at this point, I think. So, and here's yet another one we did, uh, Fred. I got down a little bit lower and, uh, again, got some of the pink of the Boy, sky. Now it looks like I'm going, America. And, yeah. You're looking off. Of, I think you're running for office in this <laughs> one. <laughs> So anyway, dog you, catcher, running yeah, for dog catcher. If you have questions, I please leave I them in the that. comments. I, you know what? I'd be a, the worst dog catcher ever. I'd go, you can go, puppy. Here, here's a treat. Go on. I want to mention too. I'm going to put a card up here. If you're on YouTube, if you're not on YouTube, it's not going to mean anything that you can link to one that we did with night portraits. So we did a whole night portrait thing in the, down in Dunedin. I'm going to link to that, so you can go check that out. So while you're here, if you're on YouTube, please. Please follow us. Please and, visit us and uh, follow us. Like yes. this and subscribe to our channel. If you're not on YouTube, please go out to YouTube and like and subscribe to our channel. <laughs> so we really would appreciate that. And you can always leave any questions or comments, and uh, we do our best to respond to them. So hopefully uh, this will help you. And uh, even if it just gets you thinking, yeah, lights you up a little bit, so to speak. To go out and try some of your own, and I want and to see. We're talking share single stroke. It's it's nice to take uh, a bunch with you, but and it doesn't have to be that powerful. And what's interesting is that there are a lot of flashes out on the market that are not super expensive that will serve sure. the need. And then if you can use some way to remotely set it off, the what you were talking about was using IR later mm-hmm. earlier. And the problem with infrared is that well, it's <sighs> IR or it's uh, the has a pre flash too that goes right. off and can go off. But you've, the other flash has to see that. Yes. If it doesn't, 
it won't go off. They won't go off, and you'll have all this problem. Yeah, that's why the, the uh, these little radio, cheap radio remotes. Right. And I think you can get them for twenty five bucks. Don't also think that you have to do this just as singles portraits. I mean, you can have group. We get more people. Oh yeah, too. So yeah, that's it for this segment. And I hope that you learned something and pick something up. Any final words or <laughs> advice for our listeners? Yes. I'm going to get the last word this time. Bye. <laughs>